You are listening to the Paranormal Chronicles Radio Show. Here is your host, paranormal researcher and author of the best-selling A Most Haunted House, Gavin Lee Davis. Good evening and welcome beautiful people to another episode of TPCN. My name is JL Davis, founder of theparanormalchronicles.com and author the best selling A Most Haunted House and Ghost Sex Violation, but you can call me Gav. Thank you to everybody that has tuned in, subscribed, shared and become a bell buddy. Your support is greatly appreciated in the ever growing TPCN universe. TPCN, the Paranormal Chronicles Network, is for you with shows on Bigfoot, Ghosts, Jack the Ripper, Werewolves, Killer Clowns and so much more. So go check out the archive and playlist and delve deep into the unknown. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to put the kids to bed. If you are easily offended, then please go and watch one of our more PG rated shows as tonight we have a blinder. Our guest, Nikki Davis of Devon Ghost Adventure, does not hold back. Controversial, outspoken, opinionated, and yes, at times colourful, with language to match. Nikki is one of a kind. TPCN is a platform for those in the paranormal community to voice their opinions, to tell their stories, to give their views and their theories, and Nikki is certainly going to do that. Our aim at TPCN is not to offend, but to present a variety of guests and hosts on a number of paranormal topics. So please be aware that the views and opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of TPCN or its staff. That said, I am sure you will enjoy Nikki, a glamorous, hardworking and dedicated paranormal investigator that I am sure will be coming to a TV screen soon. TPCN fans, the paranormal world will never be the same again. So put grandma to bed, get a stiff drink ready, because this, my friends, is Nikki Davis. Good evening, Nikki. How are you, my friend? Good evening, my friend. I am very well, thank you. Have you had a bit more awake than the other day? But it's not been too bad, unfortunately. I'd rather talking to dead people, but apparently I have to talk to the living to pay the bills. (laughs) Exactly. Just to let you know, I have warned the TPCN universe that you're a colourful lady, you're passionate, you're dedicated, you're opinionated, and you'll probably yeah. say whatever you want. This is your show, so you say exactly what you need to say, okay? Okay. Brilliant. Now, before we begin on anything, you had an investigation on Saturday night, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. From what I'm seeing on your Facebook, the Devon Ghost Adventures Facebook page, it looked phenomenal. Can you tell us what was happening there? Well, it's uh, inside Devonport Dockyard, so we're very lucky to get there. It's the old ropery where they used to hang people. And basically, for me, I'm very greedy, okay? Everyone had a great night. I wanted to be scared shitless. I wasn't. I was very comfortable. But we did have footsteps. When there was no one there, we sent people up to investigate, which was very interesting. No EVPs. No, nothing. For, considering it's one of Britain's five most haunted places, I could have had a picnic. I was very comfortable. You know, a couple of people took away personal experience. But for me, it was it was very quiet. So, I mean, I tend to find that these places that have the most awesome reputation for spirits and poltergeist activity tend to give very little away once you get there. It's the smaller places where people haven't been before and they're still... So when you go in with lots of energy and laugh, after and keep to the basics spirits will interact with you. Although these places have great reputations, sometimes I think a little bit of it is storytelling. Do you think that because these regular haunts, excuse the pun, but people go regularly to these top haunted places that maybe it uses up all the energy or even the it's ghosts are bored? Up. Maybe the spirits are bored of people coming to see them every Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know, I think, right, basically, let's get back to basics, okay? The human body is made of energy. When the body dies, You can't destroy energy. It's positive energy. 
So that is what a spirit is. So over a period of time, that spirit gets, the energy gets less and less. So as paranormal investigators or anything, we need to give a bit of energy, a bit of positive energy to the spirit or the surrounding area so the spirit can communicate. So I tend to think that if a spirit's been communicating every Saturday night, that their energy levels drop and it takes a lot more energy. You need to give a lot more energy to get it to be able to get the spirit to communicate. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Yeah. I think it's an accent theory. However, I am aware that one of your team, was it, or one of the people who joined you on the investigation took a very compelling photograph. Have you done any more investigating into that yet? Yeah, it was a cracking photo. And in hindsight, it looked like, because you could see through it, it looked like a Victorian lady praying. Yes. You know, that was what you saw. But on further investigation... If I put the young lady who was there and superimpose the two on top, it's the same image. So my theory is this, that someone was videoing at the same time. So the light from the video and the flash of the camera has created a projection, i.e. giving the long dress because the photo was taken from above. Ah, OK. So that's what I think. But I'll sit on the fence with it. Well, at least you're honest. At least we haven't seen it in the sun before you, you've done some scrutiny and some investigation into it. Because I do know some investigators would have just ran with that photograph. I'd rather go with something that that's real that i cannot explain whether it's paranormal or not if it if i can't explain it then there might be something in it but i'd rather debunk as much as i can because people are so quick to criticize you know so if we're going to get evidence let, let's get real evidence you're never going to get everybody to believe it because at the end of the day we're dealing with the paranormal half of the population unless you bottle it Put it on the shelf in Tesco's and sell it. They're not going to believe it. Yeah. And you're not going to do that in my life. Yeah, exactly. You were saying that you didn't have any EVP evidence. However, you did pick up on some naughty chatter in a in a cupboard. <laughs> Listen, just for all your listeners out there, when you're doing a live EVP session and you're alone with your partner in a room, remember, it's recording. And I've got to listen back to it. I don't need to know about your sex life, for God's sake. Oh dear. What were they saying? <laughs> Yeah, um, something about taking someone's clothes off when they got home. So, you know, hey, oh. mm, interesting. I was discussing with Elaine Kelly of the Spectre Detectors a few weeks ago about how I'm doing some research with some investigators. And what they're doing is it's a male and female couple. What they're doing is, is having sexual intercourse at haunted locations <laughs> to see if they can generate a sexual tension or energy to see if that will work, especially in places of renowned and historic hauntings to do with romance and love and jealousy mm -hmm. so maybe that's something we could see at devon ghost adventures that would certainly sell tickets that's a lot of energy you know what i mean depends how long oh, you can yeah, go that's half an hour of my life mate half an hour of my life what about the rest of the sudden investigation <laughs> to be fair it's having sex is energy and it's a natural energy provided by two people so i would imagine that if there is spirit around that spirit could use that energy so you kind of see the logic in that to a degree but i don't think devon ghost adventures is going to be a free-for-all sex site yes. for now give it time give it time now nikki um, i have to ask you this question you are deemed it. ever ever so controversial why is this oh dear oh i don't know listen i don't say that what i say is right but what I say is it's what I believe and not everybody believes in what I'm saying. So what I say to you is, I tell you what, if you don't believe in what I'm saying, come out for a night with me. Have your own experience because you're never going to believe it until it's your own experience anyway. I mean, and I've been called daughter of Satan and everybody by other paranormal groups. Listen, if I'm daughter of Satan, why the hell haven't I seen a ghost yet? <laughs> I haven't. So I've seen funny things. I've seen, I've had things thrown at me and I couldn't explain it. You know, I've caught that black shadow in the crown and column. I think I sent you a photo of it. I cannot explain that. That photo that we caught, I know I was the only one there. Apart from the chap that was taking the photo, we didn't know we had it. I sent it to a friend in Milksham to have a look on his fan dangled computer. And he, he's a UFO chap, but he looked at it and like he said, I can't, he wouldn't put his name to it being paranormal, which a lot of people won't. But what he did say is the black shadow is three shades darker than any other thing there. Yeah. It is unexplained. I can't explain it. Do you think but... it's shadow people? Do you think you've, you've actually caught on camera evidence of the new Vogue paranormal entity, which is the shadow people? In this case, 
yeah, I'd put my name to the fact I think I have, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do all. Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. What are they? Where do they come from? Oh, where do they come from? Well, let's go into the paranormal vortex conversation, shall we? Yes, please. Okie dokie. Paranormal vortex. It's a space or a place where spirits travel between worlds, apparently, uh, like a point of passage. A lot of these parent paranormal vortexes, they still exist long after other after the buildings have gone because it's a passage. So the building goes, the passage still stays, the hauntings continue in that location so cleansing it or doing whatever else you're not closing the vortex okay okay but there's a difference because you also have a spiritual vortex it's believed to be located along ley lines and you know i love ley lines okay absolutely love ley lines they're they're positive energies that we have all around the world ancient people used to build sites along ley lines a lot of churches back in the 17th century are built on ley lines it's all about energy but i like the controversial side of ley lines because a lot of people believe spirits are attracted to energy so you get a lot of ghosts and spirits or whatever you want to call them where ley lines are now looking into this actually scientifically some scientists say that a ley line is actually a waver in time if you're seeing a ghost you're not you're actually just seeing a waver in time so when that whatever woman you've just seen stops and looks at you how do you know it's not a thinning in time and she doesn't think you're a ghost exactly that's that's what i base my rational on is exactly it's two moments in time crossing each other where i could haunt someone 100 years ago from the 21st century by making a cup of tea it goes to explain when when a ghost walks through a wall and then when they do some evidence there used to be a door there because in their time they're walking through the door same with a, a, i'm a big fan of roadside hauntings and a lot of these ghosts at the side of the road their legs first or thigh deep into the soil into the cement into the pavement <laughs> it's because they're walking on the path in their time and that Excellent. time has just eclipsed over each other i'm seeing them they're probably seeing me they're probably just as scared of of me as i am of them absolutely absolutely i mean if you're going to look into the paranormal look at all sides of the paranormal ley lines yes it gives you energy and yes ghosts could be attracted to it but let's not rule out that it could actually be a thinning in time let's not rule that out It's, it's a fantastic theory there's a place just up in exeter called shoot hall now i've been there many times investigating ley lines you can find this ley line by dousing rods, uh, anything. It, it, you don't need specialist equipment for this. Anyway, this ley line runs right down past the church. On these ley lines, your equipment will actually go like, well, it'll go in, it just doesn't work properly. You know, it'll suck your battery life. It'll do all of those things. And you can actually get the most amazing EVPs from these. But is it ghosts? Or is it a thinning in time? Sometimes doing going out as a paranormal investigator can create so many other questions. It gives you one answer and ten questions. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's so fascinating. It's huge. Really, it tingles. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. It's great because we live in a world now which is connected by technology and communication. And it's great because I've never met you, but we discovered each other through social media. I've discovered other people in America, Canada, Australia. And we've got this wonderful network where we can share ideas, theories, views, data from our investigations and we can share these ideas now you know we can talk to each other we can share experience you know we don't have to go and read it in an old book and it's a shame that there seems to be a lot of drama in the Devonshire paranormal community because you could all work together for the same goal why can't you get on with each other down there is it you is it them what's going on to be honest it it, it's a difficult one because uh... Um, there's the most amazing team down here called Haunted Devon. They've been going for years and they actually go out and get evidence and they're really critical of everything they get, but they put case files together and they give me plenty of support because obviously my group's only been going two years, even though I've been doing this on and off for 22. For my own group, it's just over two years. So uh, yeah, there, there are some fantastic people that give me amazing support. And then there's other people that all they want to do is, oh, she's daughter of satan she doesn't do well what can i say fuck off is what i say just fuck off (laughs) i'm not funny how dare you criticize me when i hear that what you do is sit down and have a 
picnic and spend the whole bloody night eating. Go away. Not worth <laughs> it. I had a very similar experience when I, I've been on and off investigating since I was 11. But when you get into paranormal investigation, you give yourself a name or you form a team, or whatever the case is, you want to write a book, start a Facebook page, suddenly out the woodwork come other teams and they feel very, very threatened. Not all of them. Some of them are great. Para unity is very strong. Right. However, there are people out there. They feel very threatened. They feel challenged. They've got to be the top dog. They're the only ones you're allowed to view. And it's really yeah. difficult. And when... I started the Paranormal Chronicles. I started the Paranormal Chronicles up because I'd had a break from investigating and I'd become an alcoholic and I'd had a nervous breakdown. My life went into all kinds of horrible, uh, it went into a horrible abyss. And this was part of my progress and focus of rebuilding my life by getting into something that wasn't drinking and doing drugs and all the bad mm -hmm. stuff. And it was about having focus and research and meeting people and going out and exploring and enjoying history and culture. And regardless of that, there's people out there, they're just mean. And they used to literally chase me from website to social media site, just being so difficult. And where I'm from, Pembrokeshire, it's a small place. And word gets back to you. And people who had never, ever met me, never made contact with me, are there saying to people I know really well, I'm rubbish, my books are rubbish, uh, you know, this, that. And they've never, ever, ever met me. So being a gentleman, I listened to their research and read their books. And I thought their books were very good. And I didn't feel the need. I didn't feel jealous or threatened enough to go out there and try and debunk them or, or make them feel foolish. So I can kind of understand where you're coming from. It's sad. It's unnecessary. When they direct it as, at me as a person when they've never met me, it's shocking. Do you know what I mean? I mean, the amount of I've had emails and text messages telling me all sorts of things about myself and listen if people don't like the way i do things don't come out with me there are many groups out there go out and enjoy them you don't have to just come to my group experience everything most people that go on hunts are looking for something something personal for themselves now if they don't get that with me there's other groups please go with them in fact i would actually advise people to shake it up and go with other people you know we all do things differently me i basically i go, i stick with basics and that's energy because as far as i'm concerned sometimes you can go off track but i just stick with energy i've got as much equipment as you want to play with or anything else bottom line energy if you want to go off with some of the other groups who want to do things slightly different than me please do it there's no right or wrong in this exactly but... i have always said nikki i've always said there's not a person alive that knows the intricacies of time space the universe and the human mind nobody knows <laughs> there's nobody not even stephen hawkins sat in his chair he doesn't know everything and he's the smartest guy ever ever like ever oh, he he's a genius he speculates he theorizes yet there are people out there who don't have the intelligence level or mental agility of say a stephen hawking but mm. are so assured that what we are doing and other groups and other writers authors bloggers researchers are wrong and it's i like, know where how arrogant how ignorant of these people but they can't just think do you know what there's a woman over there she believes his energies there's a guy over there he believes it's psychological. There's a woman over there. She's a medium. Why can't I just let everyone just get on with it? Because the more people doing this, the more people who blog, do podcasts, research, investigations, the more of us out there, the more quicker we are going to get the evidence we need. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I do it. I do this trying to encourage other people. That's why you're on the show. That's why Elena was on the show the other week. That's why I have people like Claire Elliott, who's uh, she's a psychologist and rational, skeptical uh, investigator. I but have they're the because... best investigators, aren't they? Exactly. Are they not? My team sit on the fence think about it think could it be couldn't be when you turn the lights out the brain does the most amazing things and some of it not real people really frustrate me listen at the end of the day you know if you don't agree with what i say please tell me you don't agree with it but don't personally have a go at me because i will warn you this bitch will bite Ooh. and they might not like what i've got to say because you know if you disagree with me on what my thoughts i'm really happy to hear you out i'm really happy to take on your views go for me as a person and i'll rip your sudden head off wow you need to be on tv nikki i would love to see you on tv <laughs> you've had some particularly cruel comments aimed at you 
particularly yeah. people say on oh, Nikki she's a bit colourful she you know, yeah. she uses quite a bit of bad language but then again you you have a lot of it aimed at you direct just say something about bad language okay okay I love Devonport okay fantastic place most people in Denport for the last hundred odd years have sworn because it's a work in town that's what you do let me tell you when you die okay and you're not a nice person or you swear a lot and then you come along and you get a bit of energy of someone you're having a conversation with them what are you gonna do you're gonna talk like you did when you were alive so there's a bit of swearing so if i swear guess what it's hell of a good way of expressing what i'm trying to say because i'd rather if i drop something on my foot i'd rather say the word Fuck that hurt. <laughs> than, oh my golly gosh, my toe really hurts. No, let's get to the point. I love it, Nikki. I love it. I, I've got Tourette's. Um, <laughs> and it's, you're like me ramped up 10 times. Like, well, obviously, then... on the podcasts on GCN, <laughs> I, I try and behave. I'm trying you, to behave now. No, you're not excellent. Behave... You don't have to be anything. I just want you to be you. We love you, Nikki. All, all our listeners are going to love you. We just want you to be you. We don't want I won't be to... anything else, but I will do something for you. The day I get to my second stage, of paranormal investigating which is basically when i die right well i'm gonna come back i'm gonna come back on a ouija board and i'm gonna go hey motherfucker and you'll know it's me all right <laughs> maybe you could do some from the other side you could do some research into spectrophilia ghost sex for me so i can write my, I tell you what my I'll, do. I'll, I'll enter your body as a one-off Oof. no i'll be dead because that's my second stage and stage of the paranormal investigation because i can only do so much from this side it'd be like a long distance relationship through exactly through it'd be like a Bonding. A bit of bonding, do you know what I mean? We've probably offended quite a few people, but I hope really? while we've offended you, we've given you some food for thought. You know, maybe we've oh. opened some minds. Well, if they're offended, they can turn off. I told them at the beginning of the show, to be honest, in the intro. I said, you might not like this. Put grandma to bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not a medium you don't you're not I'm an not. empath or a sensitive no. you don't have any superpowers absolutely nothing and what methods do you use on your investigations you're big into energy how do you try and record or measure that how do you record energy how do you record anything like basically we've got all the equipment that you want to have in the world but how do you do that i've got many recordings of class a evps i sent you one the other day from the yeah. valiant stir and book fastly cracking class a that one really important i just wanted to add this when you're doing an evp session and you're out on a paranormal hunt listen back to it there and then don't let anyone leave the room and listen back to it that will be your own validation because you don't want them to leave the room and then you listen to it the following day because you need the validation there and then i'm not saying they're going to falsify it in any way i'm not saying that but it will stop element of doubt. Oh, I couldn't okay? agree more. I couldn't agree more. That, that's great advice. Because later on, I'm going to ask you what, what's your advice to new new investigators. I tried to put a team together about two years ago, and it didn't work. They had but one one of them, a young lady. She was fantastic. She was absolutely superb. But the rest of them, they put absolutely no effort into it, no energy. They didn't want to do any research. They used to get frightened of everything, and they used to fake stuff all the time. Even Do you know I'd rather have, I'd rather have fuck all and enjoy the history of being out than than have so, because you know you could have shit loads happen one night, loads of things you can't understand, and just one person falsifies something and you believe it's false, everything else is gone. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You have lost everything, and I will beat that person because they've just oh tell you what that would be my worst nightmare. Twenty two years I've tried to find evidence. Can you just picture it? I find something and some muppet goes and falsifies something and it will mean nothing i would be devastated so you'd give them a slap i don't think violence is ever the answer but i might lock them in a very dark cupboard with an evp machine and pick them up in an hour <laughs> so you don't use mediums or sensitives do you do you have uh, well i do uh. but not all the time okay i use at the moment i have a young lady called vicky Be bedford she is quite a well-known medium down here. And to be honest, I'm not, I've never been one for mediums because nobody can ever tell me anything. And I don't understand that. Okay. But this girl, she, she is amazing because I don't tell her the history or anything before I go in places. In fact, sometimes I don't even tell them where they're going. Good. She is really, really good. And I, what I like about her is she won't tell you if there's nothing to tell you, she ain't going to tell me nothing. So, you know, it, it's just another way of opening my mind to other things, if you like. So it's a possibility. You entertain the notion that possibly this young lady might have an ability that might be useful on an investigation. Yes. Yes, I do. And also, I think 
it's really nice if somebody is looking for something in particular and she's there, then it, it might help them. Because at the end of the day, most people come on these hunts because they're looking for something. You know, if it helps people, that's great. But I personally, yeah, I would never have invited anybody into the group unless I believed in them. So I've got to say, for the first time ever, believe in her. Oh, controversial in itself. That's good. So you're going to keep working with this young lady? Yeah, I, would, I, I hope so. I hope so. I'm sure she's going to go very far on her own. She doesn't come to every hunt. She does come to the ones with all the history and everything in them, which is fab. I'm on the fence with mediums because I'm not doubting that there are people out there which have a sensitivity to things outside our perceptions. I'm not denying that at all. What I what does concern me is yeah. that I personally have had experience of people who claim they have these ah. abilities because they want to feel special. They want yeah. to feel like they're, there's something extraordinary about them because their lives are ordinary. Maybe they're bored, maybe they don't feel fulfilled, maybe they don't feel the opportunities they deserved mm -hmm. in life came their way. So they create a personality. Now, some people do this consciously and some people maybe do it subconsciously where they believe they've got an ability when it's not. And that's tricky because how can you just go up to a, an individual and say, prove it because it doesn't work like that and it's hard there's people out I, there i believe have a genuine ability that i yeah. can't understand but unfortunately well, there's a lot of people out there that are fake yes i agree a lot of people out there seem to uh understand right i'm gonna put this out there now i will get shot for this but i'm gonna say it okay do it i'm gonna stand on the stage right and i'm gonna look around and look at all those 40 and 50 year olds and over there um oh is there a margaret in the room of course there's a fucking margaret in the room everyone was called bloody margaret in 1970 sorry <laughs> but, but what i will say is i do believe in mediums okay but what my belief is might be slightly different you know like with the evp machine it kind of hears in a different tone that us as humans don't hear yeah. like dogs i believe that mediums have the ability to hear what we can't are you with me yeah definitely and, and that's my theory I, I think that there are some out there that can can hear spirit like the evp machine as a natural gift but i think it, it's it's more to do with the hearing like animals pick up on things and hear things that we don't and i think mediums if you if you work along that line i think that yeah, they have a gift to do that. But that's my theory. Definitely. I can't remember the lady's name. I should have researched this. But I only listened to it last night. I'm a big fan of Whitby Strieber's Unknown Country. And he interviewed a lady who has a cerebral palsy. Is that the, mm -hmm. the way you say it? Part of her condition is she's lost her hearing. And mm -hmm. where she can't hear us very well, she can hear spirit clear as day. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's on a different level. It's beyond the physical yes. limitations of our hearing. Sticking with communicating with audio, what are your thoughts on the controversial spirit box? The spirit box. It's like a radio. It goes back and forth. You know this I, because I read your I've post. Got a, <laughs> you saw my post. I saw it. your post. Oh, boy. It has worked, but not as often as I would like it to, if that makes sense. The spirit box is kind of like a broken radio. Yeah, it basically is a broken radio that picks up on different sound bites. Energy, I suppose, can waver that somewhat. Can it manipulate and say something? I've had a few strange things. It's a possibility, but 80% of the time I'd say no. Ah, but there is a 20% possibility that spirit does use it to communicate. There is a 20% possibility. Shall I tell you about this 20%? It's a 20% possibility possibility that means i could be wrong but no, you could still be right i still could be right yeah but isn't it fascinating thinking am i aren't i it's great i love it but you go back to the spirit box and then you go back to mediums and frequencies you see it's all all interlinked could the spirit box be picking up signals from a different time zone so like say you and i on went to investigate line. let's go back to the ley line do you remember i said when your equipment is on the ley line it, it will do funny things one day when we were at shoot hall we put the spirit box because i have a big boom box to go because i'm sick of those little tiny things that you put and trying to listen to it's got a big boom box for mine and um i think i must be going deaf with old age or something but you know like bagpipes type of things yeah well listen this place is in the middle of nowhere <laughs> And we put it right on the ley line and we got this video of a shooting, I don't know what it was, it's on the page, of a shooting light. Well, at this point, Nikki, who was stood there in the video, she actually thought she heard whispering, you know, like thousands of whispering voices. 
Oh. Followed by bagpipes. And the, but the bagpipes came through on the ghost box. Does that make sense? Yeah. Possibly. The, the, this is the question. Are there ghosts or is it a time frame? Do we really know? I mean, and then go to how many... Oh, you must have this. How many people message you going... My house is haunted. Okay. Now, my reply to this would be, how long has it been happening for? And they'll go, it's been happening since I got here. Does it cause you any problems? Uh, no. I said, well, sometimes you might be the stranger, my friend. So I would actually, instead of getting people in, which could make it a whole lot worse, just try and live with each other because they were there first. I, I don't know if that's wrong to say that, if it's not doing any harm. Not at all, because my book, A Most Haunted House, mm. is... A true account of a couple moving into a house, exactly. blissful beginnings. Yeah, gotta tell you, it's really good. Did you read it? I'm not really into reading over. A, I took it because my life is so busy. It over a period of about three months. But yeah, I was very intrigued. You're very good. I've got to add that. Oh, thank so, you very much. That's very else, kind of. I gotta tell you, this bloke is honest. No bullshit. Read the book. Or get a visit. Hey, they won't buy the book if they think you're coming over, Nikki. Who knows what'll be going no, on? No, no. Ignore me and just buy the book. The book, as people found out, I launched a truth, so to speak, in Take a Break, Fate of Fortune. I had a, a lovely reporter bugging me about, about it. It was my experience and I was going through a really rough time. And if anybody's read A Most Haunted House, I don't tell you this is a haunting. I just tell you what's happening within the perceptions of real people with their real testimonials. And you decide. There's no glorified sensational ending. There's no spinning heads. There's no exorcists coming. It's just about two people's world collapsing during what possibly could be a haunting. Or it could be just psychological breakdown. It could be they were using some new mobile phone technology nearby so it could have been that i tried to reason with this thing with this entity because i had the same notion as you what if i am intruding in its yard what if i am trespassing in its house and i started doing really strange things i started saying hello to it i used to ask it not to frighten us i used to ask it to give us some privacy because it massively affected our sex life living in a haunted house believe it or not you don't feel very sexy when, when you think there could be evil entities stalking <laughs> you in the dark and i got it a christmas card and i used to do little strange things and my partner she thought i was wrong she thought that was wrong, but guess what? When I did that, the, the quarantine calmed down. And when she used to ignore it, you used to intensify. I've got yeah. some good news for you, Nikki. By the end of the summer, I will put a little note into it to say thank you. There is a prequel to A Most Haunted House, and I have been approached two years ago, and we finally finished it. People who lived in the actual house, they identified it in the 80s, and guess what? They had the cool. same they had the same experience, if not worse. So there's gonna be a prequel to a most haunted house by the end of the summer. I'll make sure you get a free copy, Nikki. Yes, I'll make sure there's a dedication friend. just for you, my friend. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Do you know, it, isn't it nice, though, to get... Got, you've had your your experience, you've written about it, and then to get verif, ver, verification yeah. from someone previous that you hadn't heard, that you didn't even know existed? Yeah, these people are in their 60s. They yeah. don't know anything. They, they haven't asked for any money. They don't want to go on the newspaper. They don't want to go on the radio. They don't want to come on a show. They were just really interested because they messaged me, and I thought, oh, bugger, they found out the identity. And they said, look, we're not, we're not going to reveal it because there's people who live there. And yeah. what, you, you could argue, should they be told? Should they what? You know, maybe they don't believe. I don't know. So they, they can discover if the house is haunted for themselves. And they just came to me and we sat down and they, they've got an amazing story. And it's a different story. Similar, but different in terms of how they perceived it. Moving on, you might not be able to talk about this. And I understand if you can't. But uh -huh. what is all this chatter about Judge Rinder and ITV? Judge Rinder? Rinder, Judge is it? <laughs> Listen, I'd rather be on Jeremy Kyle and that would be pushing it. I'm not joking you. I get picture this, right? I'm sat here. I've had a hard day at work, just in 12 hours. I've come home, got a spot of tea, got me EastEnders on, I've got a bit of me Easties, all right? Thinking phone rings. I think, who the hell's phoning me during Easties? So I pick it up, I go, yeah, because I can be a little rude. Yeah, because you don't know that, right? It's really happy young lady on the end of the phone. Go, hi, hi. Um, can I speak to Nicola, please? Blah, blah, blah. She goes, hi, it's ITV here. I'm like, okay, yep. 
Okay, another one of these joke phone calls. She goes, I'm ringing you up. I was just wondering. Um, we're doing a program and uh, we're wondering if anybody um, has disagreed with paying you your money for a ghost hunt or they really have issues with when they've been out with you. Da, 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 da. Anyway, this went on. So I says to the young lady, I says, no. She goes, well, have you ever heard of Judge Rinder? He goes, he loves the paranormal. And I'm like, OK, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, wouldn't be on this program. I said, let's be fair, my love. I said, bottom line, my friend. I said, I charge 25 quid. I said, I can't imagine anybody standing in front of Judge Rinder demanding 25 quid off me. I said, they'd one, be bloody brave, and two, it'd cost them more than that to go on a program. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you. And she goes, what? You sound wonderful. I said, tell you what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do for you is I'm inviting Judge Rinder down to Devon. And what we're going to do, I said, you can bring your TV cameras. And what we're going to do, we're going to entitle it. The judge does Devon with DGA. <laughs> yeah. I said, I said and that'll be a program for you. It's a great one for Halloween. I don't know if you like my idea or not, but she told me to keep her number. So anyway, Ooh. I put the phone down. So what's the first thing I do? Like any normal person would. Yes, I said normal. I rings up. And it was ITV. I just had to check. <laughs> I thought it was a wind up. You need to be on TV, Nikki. People oh. enjoy you. You're different in terms of your eyes. you got a bit of colour, a bit of flair. And I've been flashing slides up all during this broadcast. So people can see <laughs> what you look like. You're a very glamorous young lady. You'd add that much needed glamour. You know, you'd be a good sidekick for Yvette Fielding. Yvette Fielding? Yeah, that's it. Or joining the boys on Ghost Adventures in America. Oh, They'd love you. Oh, you know you said to me about that sexy jiggy jiggy stuff, right? Building up energy that yeah. you met the jiggy jiggy. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> yeah, man. Be, hello. The ghosts coming out the walls. It'd be amazing. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, on that note, after the jiggy jiggy, that half an hour, we'd still have a few hours to investigate. And I tell you what, I reckon I could run faster than he can if I really saw something. Have you ever been frightened on an investigation? Only once, possibly. In the crown and column, when that item was thrown at me. Basically, right, I've got a fab team. Do you want to give them a all... quick shout out so we know yeah, who they give are? A give a shout them... out for Claire Rod, who does all the admin and books everything. She's amazing. We'll give it for Sharon and Bruce. They're also their um, partners. They are Urbeckers, which are fantastic to have, have with us. We've got Nikki. Love you, Nikki. She is, oh, she is so critical of everything anything but she's amazing we've got cheryl and mark who's just come back from maternity absolutely sit on the fence absolutely brilliant with people we've got young mandy we've got terry rod they've both been these two guys have been with us right from the beginning for the two and a half years never let us down really they just want to learn because we go out doing learning things oh who else we've got vicky beresford the medium Oh, and Ricky Whitemore, the medium, who comes out with us occasionally. Oh, and don't forget Michelle and Alan. Alan does our tech. He's awesome. And Michelle, she has a lot to do with the spiritualist church. And so she has a lot to do with blessings and things like that. So she And she does a lot of our research for us. Cracking bunch of people. Love you all. See you in the next dark room. Oh, anyway, get back to these people, right? Now, that was the love for them. Let me tell you the hate for them, shall I? Let's get, let's get back to business. Love all of them. Well, some of these lovely people were in the crown and column with me. Where we got that black pit, that photo of that shadow person, right? So we're all up there on the first floor. I've got my ghost box. I've got my ovulus. You know, we've got, we've got bits and pieces going on. And all of a sudden, I've got my ovulus sh um, going, bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> I've got my ghost box yelling, get out, get out. And all of a sudden, this thing comes flying out. I don't know what it was. Right. <laughs> From one of the other rooms. Right, next minute, I've turned around. They've all fucking left me there. They've left the building. And I'm stood there going, does anyone want to help me pick up the equipment? Do you, do you know what I mean? But, oh, I didn't half laugh. It was funny. Was Please. that where the ghost yeah. was grabbing people's bottoms? Yeah, that's the one. It's the... Basically, the crown and column was reported to us as being empty for about two and a half years. It's been up there since the 17th century. Lots of ghost stories about it. Anyway, closed down pub. The last landlady in there, she had, it was a second day there. It was just her and her two boys. And she went to bed. And during that night, something, as she worded it, got in bed with her. She got up. She left the pub and closed it down for two years. Good Never point. went back. And I've got to be honest, that's the only time I've been scared, I suppose, a little bit. Because, like, blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind, that place. 
They've turned it into flats, but I won't be buying one. No, can you go back? Do you know anybody no, there? the man who owns the building won't let me. He says it puts people off. A lot of the people listening, and us obviously, and other investigators, we don't mind. But nah. it does put a lot of people off. For sure. I mean, I've got the same problem as everyone else in the paranormal field right now, is everybody is seeing it as a money-making thing, okay? A place in Plymouth that I used to pay £400 for last year decides they now want to charge me £550 for four hours. Guess what? I ain't going there. It's not, I'm not. If these places charge these huge amounts, okay, I understand that they use it for buildings or that, then that's fair. Going out ghost hunting or on a paranormal investigation should be affordable for normal people who do normal jobs. It shouldn't be 80, 60, 100 pounds. Yeah. It should be a real realistic price now if these place people are going to put their prices up then the people that go to work they, you know normal people like you and me wouldn't be able to afford to go that's yeah. not fair is it this is plymouth this is a historical town you know these people shouldn't be charging that much they should be allowing plymouth people to enjoy their city you know and pay for it I'm not saying i'm not gonna pay for it i'm gonna say how can you justify putting things up by 150 pound in a year the other danger of that as well is i like an intimate group you might see it as a little bit selfish but i got a whole castle pembroke castle to myself and oh. i took four people because i wanted that intimacy because if you put the prices up then you either charge more or you increase the numbers you increase the numbers suddenly the night you're in a room trying to listen out trying to do an evp session and you can hear people trampling around upstairs people downstairs opening their flasks and their and their sandwiches you've got someone outside having a fag and it just ruins the whole oh. ambience of the night because it should be about that intimacy it should be about yeah. that feeling i like this is very peculiar i've had a well documented on tpc and i've had a, a litany of injuries from ghost hunting the last mm -hmm. few years i've broken my ankles dislocated my toes i've fallen <laughs> because i put myself in vulnerable states of mind i yeah. want to be vulnerable i want to be open i'm not a psychic i'm not a medium i'm not an empath i have to work really really hard to get a really good feel i, I read the history i interview the people i get a good feel for the place in the daytime and i make myself as vulnerable as possible i want to be a target for paranormal activity and if you're charging you know you've got an event which is 550 pound just to make ends meet you need to charge a less Seven people 50 pound or yeah. if you can't if people aren't going to spend 50 pound then suddenly it's, it's 20 people at 40 pound i mean i don't know if you've noticed on my page i'm doing two different things i'm doing um what's called a ghost hunt which is your normal you know the whole team about 15 20 people and then i'm doing which i've been doing for about a lot, three months I'm doing what's called an investigation which basically there's probably five members of public and whichever team members want to come out and we all go out and investigate together so i'm doing at the moment ghost hunts and what's called investigations because I do believe they're both two different things. Yeah. But yeah, I've been doing the two different things. Trouble is with the investigations, it's being able to afford to get into big bu to buildings without getting arrested. Yes. <laughs> getting arrested, you know, there's not good. <laughs> yeah, not at my age anyway. As you said very early on, and, and very correctly in this interview, you said people go for a reason. They're looking for something specific. You know, the yeah. exact same people, people go to a medium. There's there's nobody, well, there's a very small percent of people in that audience who don't believe. People are looking for something. They need yeah. evidence. They're worried about their immortality. They might have lost a loved one. But they've just mm -hmm. got a, a morbid curiosity on what if. And yeah. on a ghost hunt, it's the experience. It's, a, mm -hmm. it's an exclusive location. It's creepy. It's spooky. It's a hit. It's a shock it's a fix you get to meet new people investigation yeah. it's a long term it's detail yeah. it's data it's different it's, methods it's going it, back it's day quiet. after day all of those things and and for me i don't always enjoy the hunt but i do enjoy the investigation but i enjoy the people so what advice would you give to the people out there that you have motivated and inspired uh, what would you say to the people looking to start up their own paranormal investigation or their own team most important safety yeah. safety 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 you know whether always assess your building always assess you know how you're gonna get in and out the ouija board know your shit <laughs> you know let's face it the ouija board very controversial but let's just say it really does work do you really want to open that door 
What are you going to do when the countdown starts? What are you going to do on the figure of eight? Do you know any of these things? If you don't, don't do it. Safety, safety, safety. Secondly, know where you're going. Don't just go into any place. Get history. Listen to what people say. Never, if you go on a hunt and you've just started and you've got people and someone disagrees with you, listen to them. Listen to what they've got to say because they might have seen something you haven't. Don't be quick to judge other people's opinions just because they're not yours and enjoy it enjoy the history you go on a hunt enjoy the history take your team and just like being somewhere where joe public isn't in the middle of the night that on its own is class mate bravo Nikki. you have events coming up you have investigations I... coming up some of these are open to the public i take it some are yeah what's the best place for people to contact you because there's going <coughs> to be people listening now going i need to meet this woman i need to go on an investigation with her i need to go to the southwest how can i get in touch with you what's the best place the best place to get in touch with me would be on devon ghost adventures which is on facebook yep join the page we've got people on there from america from russia from egypt lots from england of course of course i work also with kent paranormal fantastic group up there we join forces we are meeting in portsmouth to do the tunnels at some stage so we've got people that talk to me that are from brighton would we'll all come and meet up in portsmouth we'll do a full night's vigil bring your sleeping bag and don't forget your torches and wear sensible shoes we're also going to do the ancient ram in as we're doing the ancient ram in with kent paranormal I believe in July some point, but I must mention this one, Hamill's House in Plymouth. It's for drug rehabilitation for young children, whether they've been born with it. It is a charity. That is the charity. If we do a charity, we will give to them. We do hunts there. No Ouija boards, nothing like that, because children go in there. But it's all about energies and sitting and watching and listening. There is great history there from the service side of things. That That's always, always a good hunt. Shout out to Hamill's House Cherry. Love them. They're fantastic people. Do a great job. Don't get enough credit for what they do. That's um, fantastic, Nikki. See, people could quickly judge you, and I'm sure they yeah. have, but they don't realise oh, you've got a heart of gold. With me? Okay, and some of your people might have listened to me tonight, right, and thought, this woman's off her tree. Well, possibly, because I've, well, I've got to be off my tree. I can't sit in dark rooms, for God's sake. But I'll be exactly the same the day you meet me as the day you say goodbye to me. I won't change. That is me. I'm not always right. I'm really happy for you to disagree with me. As a person, I'm a bit of a loner. I know people won't believe it. I'm a very personal person. I like to keep my personal life to myself. I've had a shit life, but I'm loving life now because I'm me. I, I, when I look in the mirror, I like who I see, and I like who I see because I'm honest to myself, okay? So, yeah, p people can criticise me. But hey, I'd rather criticise someone that pretends to be something at the beginning and then at the, by the time you say goodbye to them, there's someone totally different. At least with me, you know what you get, straight up. You're amazing, Nikki. I'm blessed, but I value our friendship. I value I, the I, fact you're in our network. Friend, I've learned a lot from reading some of your stuff, my friend. And the best thing is being able, it's like some of these paranormal people are amazing. Haunted Devon, I tell you what, what I've learned from them is amazing. It's a lady called Abby Dent. Wow, wow. Her knowledge is vast. And if she doesn't know someone, she'll ask me. She's not afraid to, you know, she's like me. She'll say, really? It could be. Do you know what I mean? I love that. But like her, like you, like Dave from Kent Paranormal and all of them lot, we all work together. And it's a fantastic feeling. You know, haters will be haters. I don't give a shit. That's my girl. Nikki, I don't give a shit. how yeah. far is Bar from Plymouth? Oh, bloody hell. Uh, but let me Google this, my friend. Google Maps. I did need a work in school. I want very great. <laughs> you know, hey. Ah, Bar. You moving there, my friend? I am moving to Bath in uh -huh. June. So maybe I could join you and Kent Paranormal on one of your summertime investigations. Why don't you come to Portsmouth Tunnels? You'll get lost. It's funny. I'd love it. Hopefully I won't break my ankles. July. 22nd of July, I'll pick you up on my way up. There we go. It's a date. It's, it's, you heard it here first, my friends. It's a date. Exclusive. Don't if you anyone. want to meet myself and Nikki and Kent Paranormal and all of Nikki's team, then go on the Devon Ghost Adventures Facebook page. 
book those tickets now. Maybe we'll make a weekend of it, Nicky. Maybe we'll have like uh, we'll go and sit in a pub. I obviously don't drink, but I'll have a green tea or an old grey. And people can come and talk to us. They can come and ask us questions. They can talk to us, pick our brains, spit in our faces, curl abuse at us, and we'll end up in a barroom brawl. Oh, it'll be amazing. And if you have any other paranormal friends, do you know what I reckon we should do, guys, right? You should grab a couple of your mates. I should grab a couple of my mates. And all these people out here that are listening, what we're going to do, we're going to go somewhere really dark, and you can come in and ask us a million and one questions, and we'll show you exactly what we believe spirit is. I love Debate. it. Let's grab a few of us, and let's get the disbelievers and the believers, and let's just have a good old yarn. Do it. Do it. Stop. Right, mate. Gonna do it. Do it. It'll be like Anchorman when all the news yeah. crews turn up and they just start fighting. Yeah. <laughs> Let's box this shit off, yeah? <laughs> I love it, Nikki. Right, Nikki, before we let you go, because I know you've been working today, I know you're quite late in the evening, we've added a new thing to TPCN, something I'm doing. Dave Dominguez, who hosts Event Horizon Online Radio, he's going to be yeah. back next week, and I don't know if he's going to include this, but it's called Fact or Fact fake you be the judge okay and what we're going to do is we ask our guests we're going to give them a paranormal entity and you just got to say fact or fake if it's if you've got anything to add say it if not just move on okay so remember fact or fake nice and easy starting with nikki ghosts fact or fake oh you would shit um <laughs> god am i going by the heart or am i going by the head shit 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 fact okay interesting fact. good good aliens Oh, my brain doesn't stretch that far, but I'd probably say true. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Demons. Ah, demons. This is my speciality, my friend. Let me tell you. Bad spirits, poltergeists, are not demons. Just want to let everyone know that. A demon is made of negative energy. A build-up of negative energy. That is a demon. And do I believe they exist? Yes, I do, but not as much as people think they do. So what about angels, fact or fake? Well, if you believe in the bad, then you'll believe in the good. So, true! <laughs> yeah, I love that. You're really enthusiastic. I love this game. Vampires. Vampires. Uh, vampires. Fake, okay. to a degree, unless you think you're a vampire. And then you like to drink people's blood, which is just really odd, because why would you want that? Because it tastes of metal. Disgusting. So <laughs> fake. Best answer ever. Werewolves. Woo! Werewolves. Uh, I know this one. Um... You know this one. Werewolves. Yeah, I know this one. Werewolves exist in people's minds, especially if they have something like, um, oh, oh, what's it called? A personality problem. Oh, have you seen that movie Split? No. He kind of turns into a werewolf at the end. Yeah, uh, but in his head, does in he his head, in his head, in his head. Or is he possessed? Now that I might believe in. But do I believe he's a werewolf? Possibly not. Psychology is a huge factor in the paranormal. I've done oh, a lot of research absolutely. on it. I tell you what, it's a vast field, but really, you're spot on. Absolutely spot on. You know, if somebody actually believes, right, you're in a room, okay, I'll give you a scenario. You're in a room, the atmosphere changes. The human body will change with that. And some people with EMF fields, can actually physically feel sick. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so, and, and that's fa- that, that's a fact. But then what happens is the mind and the psychology comes into it, and guess what? They've been touched by spirit. I'm not saying they haven't, because they could have been. But what I'm saying is, if you add the psychology into it, it also could have been just the fact that your mind's playing tricks on you. Or, not so much tricks, or, you know, the brain's doing something funny. Bigfoot. Yeah. Fact or Bigfoot. fake? I see. I read your Bigfoot thing. Um, <laughs> ah, shit. Uh, I think it's a deformed gorilla. <laughs> you might not be, be wrong. It could be a deformed yeah. gorilla. The Loch Ness monster. It's a big log. It's a big log. Maybe millions of years ago, there might have been a big ass dragon in there, but to, for date, it's a log. Time travelers. Oh, oh, ley lines. True. True. Good. I like that. Because of the ley, only because of my ley line theory. Shadow people. <laughs> True. I've never known anybody who has that connection with shadow people than, than you. Mate, mate, I've got to say, I put my name to it. <laughs> True. And I'm never, and I am so sceptical, but true. I think you've got some kind of connection or some energy. I'm really interested. I'm, I'm going to hold you to that paranormal investigation because oh. I think 
you have some energy that opens the doors or well, is the beacon the lighthouse yeah this is what people say and that's where people these these other people decided to tell me i was daughter of satan you know he's not paid maintenance you know he's not <laughs> that no but yeah apparently well it does happen i, I do have energy but then i'm hyperactive you no, know, no, you're not. Just a smidgen. <laughs> you're wild. I am a bit, yeah. Um, but yeah. So, what was I even saying? Oh shit! Did it again? Yeah, forget it. Finally, black-eyed children. They're these weird kids. They got black eyes. They turn up and they do weird stuff. Dave Dominguez from Event Horizon Online Radio. He's really keen on this. He's working hard researching it. Have you heard much about these black-eyed kids? Not to be confused with the black eyed peas do you know did think black eyed peas when you said it it, you know uh, uh, to be i'll be straight up with this one i don't know nothing about it and i'm ashamed of myself but i'm going straight on the computer and i'm going to find out about it no don't be ashamed there's so much and it's hard in the paranormal to 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 know everything you 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 can you tend to specialize in certain areas like me i spend a lot of time talking about ghosts whereas i really really like the alien ufo conspiracy side you know i really like that you know i like the psychology but then i like spirituality as well in terms of reincarnation there is not enough hours in the day when you've got to work and do other stuff to do all this research but i gotta be honest and i don't know anything about it but i'm i'm on it i'm all over that shit mate i'm on the computer afterwards i'll tell you what google is my best friend nikki yeah thank you you are superb i love your energy i love your edge i love your honesty on you are absolutely fabulous i need you back on what we're going to do is i'm thinking of getting dave dominguez and then we're going to do a round table show where we look at different news stories things like that and i would like to bring in claire elliott or the clear witch files because she's really rational really mm-hmm. skeptical and i'd like to bring you on because of your energy and i think that would be a great show i think you've picked up a lot of fans tonight i think people need to follow you go on facebook guys go on to devon ghost adventures click on there message nikki she'll talk to you so it doesn't matter what part of the world you're in what you believe just be nice to her. She's a wild one, I know, but she's passionate. <laughs> she's dedicated. She loves doing this. She uses her own money to get the equipment. She does this because she wants to. She's built a team around her because she wants to be part of the team. And despite all these negative people, all the people come out the woodwork, calling their daughter Satan, saying some really, really <laughs> horrible stuff. Nikki's shown and told me some of the stuff these people say. She's still out there doing it. So to all those haters out there, basically you lost man because she's still doing it she didn't yeah give in. losers losers man she didn't give in your hatred your negativity didn't pull her down she's still out there and fair dues to you and good luck with was it haunted devon and kent haunted kent. devon and kent paranormal shout out to them too because you're doing a fab job mate i will flash up some cards for them so again anybody listening to this whether it's it's recent or further down the line in the archives get in touch with nikki davis she is fantastic she is glamorous she's funny she's honest and guess what she knows her stuff Nikki, thank you so much. You are a legend, my friend. I'm a legend, yes. Am I? Okay, thank you. Nikki, thank you very much. You're absolutely (laughs) super. We will have you back on soon. And keep the writing going because I love what you write. Thank you. So please get out there and buy his books or get a visit. (laughs) <laughs> thank you nikki you're my personal right. cheerleader nikki good night to you and keep safe good my friend good night my friend you take care and don't let the bed bugs bite and if you do see something take a photo and send it to me you are listening to the paranormal chronicles network please remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode Visit theparanormalchronicles.com for paranormal news, reports, pictures, audio, and video content. Find us on Facebook at The Paranormal Chronicles. Together, we explore the unknown. Do you believe in ghosts? A Most Haunted House is the true best-selling paranormal account that has chilled the world. Available on Kindle, on Audible, and in paper book. Dare you read? Dare you step inside a most haunted house? (laughs) 
Good evening, creatures. It is I, Gavin. Now, if you're enjoying our show and would like to support us without chilling your bank account, then when you shop at line at Amazon, simply head to theparanormalchronicles.com website. Click support us on the left-hand side, follow the link to Amazon, and shop away. Your goods won't cost you any extra, but we get a few pence and a few cents as a commission. Think of it as a tip jar, and your support will help us chill, thrill, educate, and entertain for future broadcasts. Next time you shop Amazon, think theparanormalchronicles.com. The Paranormal.